All right. Coco time. Let's get some gaming in. Uh, we don't need those. Got the SDC going tonight. So I've been wanting to check out this game called Storm. Let's see how it looks. Sounds pretty cool. Um, we, um, storm. Boom. All right. So we're on Storm here. Boom. Um. Oh, what? Well, crap. All right, well, let's see what Curtis's website says about this. Storm. Let's see. Storm. Coca 1 2 only. So yeah, if you don't know about Curtis's website, this is a great resource, lcurtisboyle.com, and uh, yeah, he's got a complete list of, well, as complete as any list, and growing, put it that way, of color computer games and uh, software in general, plus links to uh, the latest Nitrous 9 builds, anyway, Storm. This actually looks pretty awesome for an old Coco game from the early 80s. This used the uh, old semi-graphics modes, SG-12, SG-24, I think this is SG-24, that gives you basically nine colors including black um, and I believe it is 64 by Yeah, 64 by 192. Semi graphics tw uh, 24. So it's a Tempest clone. I did enjoy the game Tempest in the arcades as a kid, so I would actually like to play this. I guess it's time to pull out the old Coco 2. Let's see, I'll turn this off. Pull out the SDC, set it up here, disconnect video, audio, disconnect RF, because yes, I actually use that, disconnect cassette, again, joystick left, joystick right, and uh, RGB. Wallaby Okay, uh oh Freaking power cord Okay, well that's gonna be a five minute hassle if Only there were an easier way Well, hello friends and welcome back to the channel. I'm Coconut Bob. And before we get started, first, a headphone warning. Uh, due to an unfortunate microphone placement, there is a lot of popping and scraping that I have done my best to eliminate. So just don't crank your headphones up too loud and hopefully it'll be okay. Now, a little background. Um, some of you already know, but I have always disliked permanently attached power cords on devices. They tie your device to whatever furniture they're on, sometimes have to squeeze through these tiny holes, sometimes around corners and behind crevices. And they can really make installation and removal more difficult and kind of limit your options in other ways. Another problem with this transformer setup is that the power switch is downstream of this. so. Anytime your color computer is plugged in, even when it's powered off, 
it's creating a parasitic load and drawing power from the wall. And on top of that, when you do power your cocoa on, this becomes the by far the biggest heat source inside the case. And as we all know, heat is the enemy of electronics and this will accelerate the demise of your retro treasures. Additionally, our European friends newly exploring the cocoa world may feel the need to buy expensive voltage converters that just aren't needed for this application. So I'm gonna clarify that in the process. The modification I'll be doing today solves all of these problems by replacing the traditional 110 volt power cord and transformer with a commonly available PD power supply and USB-C connector. The color computer generates all of its own timings internally, so you don't need to worry about your country's power standards or 50 versus 60 hertz. It just doesn't matter on a color computer. Modification to the case is minimal, and you can reverse these changes and replace the original power supply if you want to. But why go backwards in technology when you can, in some small way, contribute to a greener future as well as potentially increasing the life of your machine? Well, enough yammering. Let's get on with the mod. Alright, so today we're going to talk about converting a cocoa to run off of DC. I've already got basically all the guts out of this. Including the transformer and power cord. So what I have here is a... Uh, Actually, I've got five of them, and they all came as a single board, so I'm going to have to break these apart, but this is fine for now. This is a PD uh, dummy module, so you get a PD power supply, plug it into this USB-C, and it'll output, you know, whatever voltage you set it for, 5 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts, 15 or 20 volts. Basically, what we need to do is figure out how to mount this and my plan is to put it right there where the power cord comes out so basically we just need to trim this middle post off and then that will slide down in there and then we can maybe secure it in with some glue or something. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut that post off. So I got a little chisel tip, exacto blade. I'm just going to kind of push it in, lined up right on the bottom. Uh, at the very bottom, but right where this support is, that goes in between the posts. Now this is pretty soft plastic, so I can just kind of push and, and it's a fresh blade too, so I can just kind of push and wiggle it through there. It can also help to heat the blade up with a heat knife or a, a lighter if you want. That makes this go a lot quicker. This is working for me, so I'm just going to go slow and steady. Be patient, no need to rush it. We're almost through. There we go. So it looks like the board needs to go on this side. So I'm going to trim this little ledge right here. Again, just put the blade in, arc it back and forth. Walk in it right down the wall.
Okay, that looks pretty good. And then I will probably just go ahead and take my file and smooth this side out so that it will just sit flat right there. further or do I So one thing that you probably want to get if you're going to be doing case mods like this is a set of needle files, or sometimes called jeweler's files. And they have different shapes in here. You've got a triangle, you've got half round, you've got squares. I'm looking for my round one. And I think I'll trim this even and put a screw in it to hold that down because that will be pretty cool. Alright, well there it is in place. see the little board, trigger board, and a little bit of this putty that I put behind it to hold it so that I can insert a cord without it being pushed in. I made this little cap out of just like a plastic um, DVI connector cap that, you know, for shipping. So I'll just cut a corner off of it, put a hole in there so that I could, you know, just have a little bit extra physical security holding this thing down. Come on. But does it work? Let's find out. Alright, so I'm just going to plug this on here. Um, basically the black wire is ground and the red and blue wire both get 12 volts. I guess it's about time. I mean, we've got power. I need to hook up a display. We're just going to do a quick uh, composite video test. So the laptop supply here, it's only outputting 9 volts. 
but apparently that's fine. Still works. Pull that out. Yep. Okay. So this machine is basically functional now. Try a keyboard on here, make sure it's actually working. This is my repaired keyboard. And I'll throw the SDC in here. 